Good evening and welcome to Prime Time News coming to you live and direct from the News First Studios here in Colombo. I'm Bernadine Jai Singha. Let's now take a look at headlines. The attache case, presidential dispatch bag designed by the army for the president. Fit ratings downgrade Sri Lanka's long-term local currency issue a default rating. Sri Lankan Airlines to lease more aircraft. A warning from the chief incumbent of the Mihintale Rajamaha Vihare. Sahana Nodunot, me Adistane, Ubala Gedereola Tama Pasabara. Andra Kumara challenges President to declare the day for local government elections. Seven new political parties established. Sarat Fonseca's criticism over failed elephant trenches heats up in Parliament. <laughs> Protests broke out across multiple areas in Sri Lanka, citing various demands. The Cultural Development Assistant Officers protested in Kurunagala on Friday, citing that the government is planning on abolishing their positions and to close down the Department of Culture. <laughs> The ministries of public administration and culture are trying to abolish the post of cultural officer. After the cultural officers retire in 2030, this position will be lost and the Department of Culture will be no more. Therefore, we call on the government to withdraw these decisions. They also demanded that the cultural development assistant officers be given permanent positions in service. Farmers protested in Horana, demanding the Anguruvathu to Remunavava be renovated immediately and water be diverted to the paddy fields. These farmers claim that renovation of the Vava commenced under the Vari Saubagi program in 2021. However, it is yet to be completed. The contractor says the government provides a soil and they commence cleaning the silt after selling the soil. We cannot believe that. They have only cleaned 40% of the Vava. If they continue like this, it would take another year to complete it. We cannot wait for that long. Our paddy fields are small. We can only survive if we farm. The Joint Health Workers Union protested opposite the National Hospital in Colombo, seeking an inflation allowance for the public sector and other benefits. The public sector requested for an inflation allowance and transport allowance. There are no medicines in hospital. We demand 5% of the budget we reserved to purchase these medicines. The Sri Lankan government is attempting to lease several new aircraft to the Sri Lankan Airlines fleet. The lease for around six or seven aircraft will expire soon. Cabinet has approved to lease seven new aircraft. We want to ensure that we have uninterrupted service as we are hopeful of a massive inflow of tourists within the next three months. We want Sri Lankan Airlines to be a dedicated service. Sri Lankan Guan Samagama. Sri Lankan Airlines does not own a single aircraft. We have leased 24 aircraft. The chief incumbent of the Mihintale Rajamahavihara convened a media briefing on Friday. There are 225 MPs in government and the opposition, and like vultures, they destroyed this country. Within a month, they must steer the economy in the correct path. When the poor day comes in January, the people must be given a relief. If not, we will send them pack in. The president mixed up Angulimala and Devadatta. They are purposely messing up this country. People who lose their memory speak like that. The attache case presidential dispatch bag of international standard designed by the Directorate of Electrical and Mechanical Engineers of the Sri Lanka Army was handed over to President Rani Vikramasinghe on Friday. It is a renowned tradition to accompany world leaders with a sophisticated briefcase with international standard, commonly called an attaché case that carries important and secret documents wherever they travel. Introducing this world-famous tradition to our country, the President tasked the Sri Lanka Army to fabricate the presidential dispatch bag in line with international 
national standards. Under the guidance and direct supervision of the command of the army, a group of experts in the field headed by the Director General of Electrical and Mechanical Engineers designed the dispatch bag as a unique creation incorporating high-end technology as per specifications given by the President's office. The bag offers a combination of well-thought-out features for keeping the bag's content safe and organized, and it is made of premium leather, which ensures its durability, as it is expected by the President to hand over the dispatch bag from one President to the next in line. Addressing the event, the President said that this initiative could contribute to cutting down on filling costs and would be introduced to all ministries as well. The President, after accepting and inspecting the high-quality and neatly finished presidential dispatch bag, commanded the command of the Army, the Director of Electrical and Mechanical Engineers, and particularly the skillful and versatile craftsmen of the Sri Lankan Army. Fitch ratings downgraded Sri Lanka's long-term local currency issuer default rating IDR to CC from CCC. Fitch has also affirmed the long-term foreign currency IDR at RD or restricted default. Fitch has removed the long-term local currency IDR from under criteria observation on which it was placed on the 14th of July 2022 following the publication of the updated sovereign rating criteria. Fitch said that Sri Lanka continues to service its local currency debt, but the downgrade of the long-term local currency IDR reflects their view that a local currency debt default is probable in view of an untenably high domestic interest payment or revenue ratio, high interest costs, tight domestic financing conditions and rising local currency debt or GDP in context of high domestic fiscal financing requirements which authorities forecast at about 8% of GDP in 2022. On external debt restructuring, Fitch said the sovereign remains in default on foreign currency obligations and has initiated a debt restructuring arrangement with official and private external creditors. Fitch downgraded the long-term foreign currency IDR to RD following the expiry of the 30-day grace period on coupon payments that were due on the 18th of April 2022. State Minister Shehan Simasingha told an international conference that policymakers are intent on meeting a December deadline to present proposals that might help unlock an international monetary fund bailout. We are now uh, speaking with our bilateral creditors officially with the help of our advisors as well as IMF officials to get the financing assurance. So we are looking forward for a positive response from our uh, creditors. Yes, uh, we are. if we miss the December deadline, we will have to go in for January. But all in all, the agreements we had, the staff level agreement, then uh, the prior actions which we had to uh, made to stabilize the economy has been completed from uh, the government's point and uh, we are looking forward for the December approval. As of now, I would say the economy has uh, stabilized due to different measures the central bank and the Ministry of Finance has taken. So could you please elaborate a little bit on how the talks with uh, China, India and Japan are progressing in terms of, uh, you know, agreements with them? Uh, at what stage are we in that process? I think uh, the negotiations, negotiations are going on positively. The engagements are going on positively. We are waiting for a, a positive response with regards to uh, financial assurance. Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Georgieva, speaking to Reuters next projected growth for the coming year and stressed the global implication of a declining Chinese economy. China, one of the largest, actually the largest bilateral uh, creditor, take the responsibility of figuring out how we can accelerate that resolution. Uh, and um, uh, I, I, I am very hopeful that when we have a chance uh, next week uh, to discuss these issues, uh, we will continue on a path of finding better solutions uh, and strengthening the capacity of the common framework to deliver. And for emerging markets and developing countries, this translates into 25% of emerging markets trading in distressed territories, 60% of low-income countries being under debt distress. We don't act decisively, and as you know, uh, the World Bank and the IMF came up with very pragmatic proposals uh, that stand still 
clear rules and timelines for common framework resolution and including countries like uh, uh, Sri Lanka, in other words, expanding the common framework. We have to get the uh, capacity to move much faster this time around. TNA parliamentarian Shana Kian Rasmanikam told the Sri Lankan parliament on Friday that Chinese debt to the country must be restructured. China is a $20 trillion economy. As a country, our debt to them is $7.4 billion. They are offering 9 million litres of diesel and 500,000 kilograms of rice. However, if they are true friends, the debt must be slashed in its entirety or it must be restructured. They must support the process. This message is to the Chinese government and the Chinese embassy. 22 billion Sri Lankans are different based on religion, etc. But for the future of all the people, we banded together for Gota Go Gama. Don't push us to point where we will chant China Go Home. While I respect the views of the Honourable Member of Parliament and while he has all the right to express his view, I don't think we should take a position as such to say that we will lead or somebody will lead a China go home. All what I'm saying is Honourable Member, let us work together, but I don't think we should be so harsh. So let's work a solution, let's work a solution, okay, okay. that's all. No, you, no, you allowed him to say that. It's on record. You can't allow one member to comment on a speech of another member in the opposition. That, that is Dr. Harshati Silva's opinion. That has no relevance. He should not comment on the propriety of a speech made by another member. I, 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 I want Dr. Harshati Silva, please don't interfere with the expression of views by other members of parliament. You are not, you are not the minister. Okay. You are another member in the okay. opposition. Mama, why do you want to talk to you about the people who want to talk to you? Mama, why do you want to talk to you about the people who want to talk to you? Mama, why do you want to talk to you about the people who want to talk to you? Mama, why do you want to talk to you about the people who want to talk to you? Mama, why do you want to talk to you? totally out of order for honorable member to be commenting like this Are, that is totally out of order that is the point of order that i'm raising api me rate janata wenen katha ganne samagi jana bala wegede portu oda sri lanka da wegede janata wenen utmana da oga langa desha bala ganne rate janata wenen mama katha ganna vivada avasan ganna me moolika vivada avasan ganna oripinara avargale na nama kiwe obatuma me anawasa vivada gara patla wenne nisa obatuma de gara uttara denna wedihat timak ne obatuma de point of order ekut ne Garu mantu ma, obat ma agi nama kiri, obat ma anwasu ibadat ada patla bici nisa, obat ma ada point of order agna, itu ma agi adas palakiri me dua kare, ek obat ma patla bici nisa, itu awasan keranda me ibadat, kala ek udah kiri ma bila pesa bila 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 khataran. Ayo ayo, kauanya kata inge, min kare, orang orang time ke pesi ni, terim terim me kurga kurga katik under kiri ni, ella, ella orang ke chance puring aya. Pesa me ella min kare ke orang orang alam, min min mika puring ni, ni ala orang. Let's now cross over to short commercial break. News first. Main sponsor. 25% for two months. 25.5% for four months. Valuable FD. A trusted place for your fixed deposit. Valuable FD. 25% for two months. 25.5% for four months. Valuable FD. The symbol of stability. News first with the people. Welcome back to the news. The United Kingdom says it is working with India to address issues in Sri Lanka. The UK House of Lords discusses Sri Lanka issue, particularly the economic and human rights issue. Uh, my Lords, going beyond uh, my noble friend's answer, and given that next year is the 75th anniversary of Sri Lanka's uh, independence, uh, and therefore its long partnership with Great Britain as a member of the Commonwealth, uh, would my noble friend be able to say if Her Majesty's Government will consider working with Sri Lanka uh, to, to invest in a large landmark development scheme for the country that would help add resilience in the future uh, against the economic shocks of the sort that we've seen it suffer recently? My Lords, I assure my noble friend, notwithstanding the continuing prioritisation we're giving to human rights, and that has to remain part of that 
conversation and discussion to ensure that the issues that arose from the previous civil war, particularly and the um, targeting of particular communities, is not forgotten. And that's why we remain resolute in what we're doing at the HRC. But I take on board the specific element of economic empowerment of communities as a way to build a country. And certainly, in previous uh, months earlier this year, as the then Minister responsible for our relations with Sri Lanka, I've met with President Rikramasinghe. I've recently again also met with Foreign Minister Ali um, uh, Sabri. And our focus has also been on the current IMF package and how that should act as a lever to ensure economic prosperity for all communities across Sri Lanka. Um, the bad governance, conflict and human rights abuses have pushed Sri Lanka to the brink. It's reported that their debt to China is $7.4 billion, or nearly 20% of its public external debt. So will the government work with Sri Lanka, yes, to help them address their internal reconciliation, but also to reduce their exposure to China and their dependence on Russian oil and ensure that they can engage with the whole world and not be just pushed to one side? Yeah. My Lords, again, I agree with the Noble Lord, and that is why we're working very closely. When I was last in Sri Lanka, we worked on the specific importance of ensuring the restructuring of their debt with the IMF. That program will take time, uh, up to about six months, to ensure the outcomes of that. The Noble Lord is again right on the issue of infrastructure support. It's not uh, just Sri Lanka. There's many countries across that region and beyond that are reliant on China infrastructure, but that results in a very long-term indebtedness to that particular country. And we are looking to see how we can form alliances and partnerships to overcome that. And I, but the IMF uh, um, rescheduling of the debt is the first step to that. And I think more longer term, perhaps picking up on the friend that I also heard, it's good to have two ears rather than just one uh, about the Commonwealth. I think there is a role for the Commonwealth to play in this, and that's why we're pleased also India has come forward and also given certain uh, credit lines to Sri Lanka to help it through its current economic troubles. Leader of the National People's Bhava Anurukumar Desanayaga told Parliament that the President must declare whether or not the local government elections will be held before 20th March next year. In recent days, we witnessed the President come here and respond to the questions raised in the House and then leave in a hurry. I need a clear answer from him on this issue. Local government institutions need to be established before the 20th of March. It means that elections need to be held, members need to be announced by Gazette, and the local government bodies must be activated before the 20th of March. To do this before the 20th of March, the Elections Commission must issue the Gazette notification to call for nominations by the end of December or the beginning of January. The election the Elections Commission has that authority as of now. I saw the Commission inquiring into the matter from the Attorney General. The Election Commission does not have to do that again, as they have that authority. The Elections Commission can issue that gazette even tomorrow. The Elections Commission is also part of a conspiracy. The President must announce that the government will not take any decision to violate or undermine the authority of the Elections Commission. The Commission is looking at how the government functions. We know where Punchi Heva from the Election Commission worked before. We know what party office he was at. We know who he was close to. Though he is the Chairman of the Elections Commission, he is not independent. We have concerns as to whether the Elections Commission and the Chairman are engaged in a conspiracy to delay the elections. The Elections Commission has decided to accept seven groups as political parties. According to a statement by the Election Commission, the following groups are now accepted as political parties. United Congress Party, Second Generation, Sri Lanka Social Democratic Party, Patriotic United National Party, Bahujana Viat Peramuna, Eros Democratic Front, Democratic People's Congress. With the latest inclusions, the total number of registered political parties in Sri Lanka increased to 86. A heated exchange took place in Parliament over elephant trenches during the debate on the expenditure head for the Ministry of Wildlife. A member from the government representing Ampara proposed for elephant trenches to replace electric fences. Imagine digging trenches spanning 7,000 kilometres that are 10 feet wide and 10 feet deep. It will become a serious issue. I knew exactly what was going to happen when the proposal was made. Legally, they have dug 5 kilometres and illegally, they have dug up 55 kilometres. The wildlife department is extracting soil and sand. Any man with common sense would understand that this cannot be approved. 
common sense tiyena miniyak samanyen goviyek wat kawadawat tama tuma e wage deekata anumatiyak dei kiyala hitanna amaaru ंगलिफंटर Can you hear what I'm saying? What did you do when you were a minister to prevent this issue? Nothing. We dug these trenches without paying a single cent from the government. The villagers are protected today because of this. What did he do when he was a minister? Those who murdered 60 to 70,000 people are lecturing us about democracy today. <laughs> The human elephant conflict, an issue both politicians and responsible authorities have failed to solve, has already cost the country countless lives and property. In the Putlam district, the number of wild elephant attacks has increased, especially in areas like Karwalagaswava, Saliyavava, Nilabamma, Thevanuvara. and taladagama wild elephants that attack these villages destroy multiple cultivations as well and the worst affected other coconut cultivations according to the locals the electric fence failing to function properly is the root cause of the issue wild elephants have put down several sections of the existing electric fence as well even though the civil defense force has renovated the fences it has not been able to keep the elephants away jeevat ende vidihanne hema da mali thama enne ti Their request is for the authorities to renovate the elephant fence properly and drive away the herd to the Tabu of a sanctuary. The cut-off marks for state universities based on the 2021 GCE advanced level examination results were released on Friday. The University Grants Commission said that 91,115 students had applied for university admission this year. 41,228 students have been selected for universities. A majority of students have selected the arts stream. Usas adhyapan varam mitaram suisheshi matam king vadivena. This is the highest number of students selected for higher education opportunities. Students have the option to apply for four degrees, which did not exist before. The cabinet took a special decision to release these cut-off marks before the recorrected ADL results are out. If the results of a student change after recorrections, that student will be given an opportunity quickly. The Z score of such a student will increase. No one's first Z score will reduce. No one will lose their spot in a university just because the Z score of another student is increased. We could Z dagge adu vela out labicha sarasavi varam ahimi wenni ne. Api arasi We will give 30 days to make appeals. The application form for appeals is in the university admission application booklet. Ha edum patre Is fast. The Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority said that 59,759 tourists visited Sri Lanka in November 2022. A total of 628,017 tourists visited the country during the first 11 months of 2022. The highest number of tourists during November was from Russia and that figure stands at 13,820. In addition, a total of 10,167 tourists visited Sri Lanka from India. Between January and November this year, the highest the number of tourists were from india and that figure stands at 105654 biz fast you're watching prime time news let's now cross over to short commercial break ivan satutin inne wiring karala 
Firing kirwi is non polikon yodala. For your safety and the protection of the wires used in networking and AC wiring, S non polikon cable trunking. Welcome back to the news. Day two of Say No Together, an awareness program on sexual gender based violence in Colombo, was held on Friday. Say No Together, an awareness program on sexual gender based violence, was held in line with the global 16 days of activism on gender based violence. Participants were able to witness a gallery which showcased the work of 37 women's rights organizations. The event will continue to the 10th of December from 2 pm to 8 pm. The Human Rights Day debate organized by the Capital Maharaja Group was held on Friday. The debate was held in line with the Human Rights Day that falls on 10 December each year. The Human Rights Day debate organized by the Capital Maharaja Group was held on Friday. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights 75th Anniversary, which is also called UDHR 75, will focus on three key objectives. They are educate increasing global knowledge of the UDHR, promoting attitudinal change countering the increasing skepticism on human rights, offering concrete knowledge and tools to help people better fight for their rights. The University of Colombo and the Uwavalasa University participated in the debate. Supreme Court Attorney Deshan Heva Vitanage, senior journalists Asoka Dias and attorney Sonali Vanigabatuge served as the judges of the debate. Cameroon are faced with the difficult prospect of needing to beat Brazil at the UCL iconic stadium to progress to the knockout stages of the World Cup on Friday. Serbia faced Switzerland at Stadium 974 in their final Group G game on Friday, with the Eagles knowing that they need to win to stand any chance of the progressing to the knockout stages. All matches of the 2022 FIFA World Cup will be aired live on TV1 as MTV NBC, the champion network, is geared up to bringing and bring the exhilarating action of football's grandest event to your screen. With that, we wrap up our primetime news. I'm Bernadine Jai Singha. Good night. Take care.